Messaging Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructorlet.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Here's just a visual way of uh, looking at that performance tune life cycle. So starting by defining requirements and do my measuring tests of my base uh, baseline. From there, I identify bottlenecks, implement fixes, measure and test again with a new baseline, compare that new baseline with the old one and the uh, requirements, and again, also looking for any new problems that have suddenly uncovered. At that point, go back to identifying more bottlenecks. All right, so let's start with each of these uh, different steps in the life cycle. Defining your requirements. So sit down and define acceptable performance for different types of scenarios and load. So how many, um, you know, seconds should a particular use case take? Um, if I have, for example, a website and I want to add something to the cart, by the time I actually choose an item, put it in the cart, how long should it take before I get a confirmation message, et cetera? Requirements should be defined for the target deployment environment rather than the development environment. It seems kind of obvious, but it's something that's often overlooked. Um, a lot of the performance testing and the requirements will be based on whatever the developer is using for their system. If you are going to be distributing your application to users that have uh, maybe not as uh, souped up of a computer as you have, uh, you, you need to keep that in mind and produce reasonable requirements for the target environment. And again, don't overlook perceived uh, requirements, perceived performance. A lot of times you don't have to fix all the actual performance issues if there are ways that by sending some sort of an indicator, a loading message, a status bar, maybe um, loading things asynchronously in your application, that you can change the perceived performance to a point where it's good enough. After we've defined our requirements, we move on now to measuring performance. Again, golden rule. If you read any white papers or any forum posts or any books on uh, performance tuning, this is uh, one thing they'll be sure to mention. Don't fix without measurements. If you try to fix something before you've actually found out this is a real problem or this is the area that's causing the problem, um, oftentimes you'll either have no effect on performance so you just wasted some time. Maybe you'll have a little effect, a positive effect on performance, but maybe, you know, not enough to have warranted everything that you just did. Or worse, and this has happened to me, you will actually negatively impact performance by going after the wrong area. So don't fix without measurements. Next, create your baselines. We need to know what our system looks like right now. So you can use lots of different testing tools to do um, regular use case testing. You can do load or stress testing, seeing how, they uh, how the application behaves under different kinds of uh, loads and whatnot. I listed here a couple of uh, tools here. The grinder is free. HP Load Runner is commercial. There's lots of different load and stress testing tools uh, that you're able to find uh, easily through a Google search. But again, create those baselines. We need to know exactly what we're starting with. Next, we need to identify those bottlenecks. So what is a bottleneck? These are going to be components or code that run slowly, so they're not meeting a requirement. Components or code that monopolize resources. Or components or code that completely block the execution of other components of code, such as the deadlock. When you identify uh, bottlenecks, what you can do is start to do some macro uh, benchmarking. So we'll talk about macro and micro benchmarking. Macro benchmarking is the amount of time or the amount of resources that are used to execute a complete use case. So bottlenecks can be uncovered during this macro benchmarking. There are tools that you can use to do uh, benchmarking, or in some cases you can just use, you know, your watch. You can just use a little timer and see how long it takes to uh, go through an entire use case for your application. Benchmarking should be done with the same configuration, the same specifications as the target production system. And typically, uh, profilers and different testing tools are used for macro benchmarking. 
So what is a profiler tool? A profiler tool is what we're going to be using to identify these bottlenecks and try to figure out what we can do to uh, fix them. So regardless of which profiler tool that you're going to use, in this case, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, Visual VM, but there's lots of other ones. Um, they all more or less have um, at least a baseline uh, set of tools for you to use. So they typically have, for example, snapshots, where I can take a snapshot of a thread dump or a heat dump. A thread dump is going to display a stack trace at a given moment in time for each thread that's currently living, or maybe each thread that's uh, uh, waiting or blocked. This is a great way for identifying deadlocks and all of the different uh, steps that were taken that were executed to get to that issue. For heat dump uh, visualizations, often produces a file called a .hprof file, and it just shows all the objects on the heap at a given moment in time. And this is great for identifying excessive amounts of objects or objects that are kept around longer than they are needed. These are your memory leaks or perhaps uh, loitering objects. In addition to these snapshots, we also have uh, live statistics, so CPU usage. Uh, this will display all the methods that are called, uh, and once you see all the methods that are called, you'll have some options of how you want to sort these. You could say, which of these call methods are called the most frequently? Or perhaps, which of these methods take the longest to run? Oftentimes, when people are starting to look at this information, they go immediately to the methods that are taking the longest time to run. Um, the issue, though, is that if that method is only called once or twice, that might not be the big bottleneck in your system. Sometimes what's happening is that you have a method that runs reasonably, but is called frequently over and over and over again. And at that time, you have to decide, um, you know, do I need to keep calling this, or is there some information perhaps that I can cache? In addition to CPU usage, there's thread usage, so we can see live at a given moment in time what threads are awake, which ones are running, which ones are sleeping, and which ones are blocked, which ones seem to be in a deadlock state either permanently or temporarily. There's memory profiling, so this is similar to the heat dump, but instead of uh, just seeing a given moment in time, it'll allow you to see live patterns with objects such as, is there a trend of more and more objects being created over time? If there is, this will identify memory leaks, uh, inefficient object allocation, or the possible need to reconfigure the heap. Are there sharp spikes and drops in object creation? This will identify frequent garbage collection and temporary object instantiation. So you may be creating a lot of temporary objects that you don't need to, which uh, uh, is causing the uh, JVM and the garbage collector to keep running frequently, frequently, which of course negatively impacts performance. And that's, as I just mentioned, the garbage collection. Frequent garbage collection can slow down an application because of this stop the world algorithm that it uses. Usually uh, contains an option to uh, run the garbage collector. So there's usually a button um, with the garbage collector where I can say, here, run it now. And then I can take a look and see, well, okay, well now which objects are still kept around? Um, is there anything that should have been garbage collected that isn't? In that case, now I can start to look and see, hmm, do I have maybe some collections or something that's hanging on to an object for too long? As far as your options for profiling tools, you have quite a few. Um, again, in this class, I'm going to be talking about Visual VM, uh, mainly because it's free, and if you have JDK 6, it's probably on your computer already. Uh, there's the NetBeans profiler, so if you use NetBeans as an IDE, that's free, and uh, in fact, that's what Visual VM is based off of. There's a couple commercial options that people love, JPro, JProfile. Um, they'll often give a lot more different visualizations and different options for um, automation, for example, while profiling your application, and of course, many, many more. As I mentioned before, that uh, bottlenecks are often displayed in these tools as hotspots. It's not the same thing as a hotspot in your, excuse me, as the hotspot JVM. It's just an area that takes a long time to process. Um, again, just another name for a bottleneck that we have. As far as the best practices, once you've decided to use a specific profiler, um, you might want to use the application a bit before running the tests. Many JVMs will start in an interpretive mode, which is slower, and eventually move to a compiled mode, which is faster. So if you start uh, getting statistics a little bit too soon in the life cycle of your application, um, you might be getting some false positives uh, in terms of performance issues.
It's also really important to compare apples to apples. So when I'm starting to uh, heat up or, you know, run my application a little bit, I'll make sure that the next time I run some statistics, when I run some tests, that I will click on exactly the same links in exactly the same order. That makes sure that I'm putting each of the applications in the exact same state as each other to make sure I'm comparing apples to apples. If you don't do that, um, you may be comparing things that have nothing to do with each other, and it's impossible at that point to determine whether you've actually impacted the uh, performance in a positive or negative way. All right, so uh, an introduction to Visual VM. We're going to just go over a couple of things here about Visual VM, and then it'll have been about 45 minutes, so we'll just take a 10, 15-minute break and continue on. So let me tell you a little bit about Visual VM. It's a free, and their uh, motto is all-in-one Java troubleshooting tool. It's built on the NetBeans platform. It's included with JDK 6, and I, I only say this over and over again because I'm surprised about how many friends of mine that work in the industry had no idea that this was already sitting on their computer. So if you have JDK 6, um, I forget the actual specific release of JDK 6, um, but you most likely have this uh, Visual VM already on your computer. If you don't, you can go to the website that I've listed here, visualvm.java.net, and download it there. Also keep in mind it can be integrated with Eclipse. Um, usually the first question I get when I say that is, well, can it be in, you know, integrated with NetBeans? And their recommendation is, hey, if you're using NetBeans, use the NetBeans profiler. That works just as well, and it's what Visual VM is based off. All right, so it is uh, 45 minutes after the hour. We're going to take a, uh, let's just take a, uh, let's take a 15 minute break, and we'll come back at two o'clock to go through the live demo of Visual VM. I'll also go through some information on some quick hits of what to do once you identify problems. And we'll look at three very simple uh, code examples of how those problems will appear inside of Visual VM. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, add them to the question and answer tab. And we will do our best to answer several of those questions at the end of the presentation. As I mentioned, uh, if we don't get to it, um, we'll try to write some of these down and maybe include them in a summary slide for the uh, Q&A session that we'll post tomorrow. So we'll resume back at the top of the hour, and uh, we'll see you in just a little bit. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.